Hey, welcome back to the book of Exodus. We're at Exodus now. Uh, we've completed nine plagues. And now we're at Exodus 11, verses 4 to 10. Let's read it out. Moses said, Thus says the Lord, About midnight I am going out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of the Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the slave girl who is behind the millstones, all the firstborn of the cattle as well. Moreover, there shall be a great cry in all the land of Egypt, such as there has not been before, and such as shall never be again. But against any of the sons of Israel a dog will not even bark, whether against a man or beast, that you may understand how the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. All these your servants will come down to me and bow themselves before me, saying, Go out, you and all the people who follow you, and after that I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in hot anger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh will not listen to you, so that my wonders will be multiplied in the land of Egypt. Moses and Aaron performed all these wonders before Pharaoh, yet the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the sons of Israel go out of his land. So God now begins to explain the mechanics of the tenth plague. About midnight on a given uh, specific day, a specific night, God would himself go through the land of Egypt and end the lives of every firstborn person, every firstborn even of the cattle. The effect would be universal, even from Pharaoh's firstborn child all the way to the firstborn child of the slave girl whose name we don't even know. This plague would be universal over all of Egypt. But God's own people will be spared. We still haven't got that instruction, but it's imminent. We'll have it here in the next day or two. But it will be very clear that God makes a distinction between his people and the people of Egypt. Now, at verse 8, we can see that some of the things described here in this passage is, is at least some of it's happening before Pharaoh's face, because they're in Pharaoh's presence when at least part of this is, is mentioned. Moses describes that the Egyptians will actually bow down to God's people, and then they will encourage, they'll let them go. They'll encourage them to go. And then Moses leaves the scene in anger. Now, as he's going out, God speaks to Moses. And he reminds him that, yes, Pharaoh's going to drive them out, but first of all, he will not let them go. And he reminds Moses this whole showdown has been one of the key intent. God has shown his wonders to the world. He's shown them to the Egyptians, and he's shown his wonders to the Hebrews as well, because he was trying to grow the faith of the Hebrews. So starting tomorrow, we're going to enter a quite extended chapter. That's chapter 12, a pivotal chapter in the book of Exodus. And at the very end of this chapter, the Exodus will begin. And we're going to find ourselves in another genre, a different kind of inspired writing. It's all inspired. We've been dealing with a lot of narrative, a lot of historical events, stories just told from the perspective God wants it told. But we're going to move into uh, several bits of law, law where God is setting up the parameters for how the world is going to work, how, the, how his people are going to live in the new situation that they're going to be in. So through these laws, God is going to provide the means for organizing the nation for life after Egypt. It's not going to be tedious. In fact, you and I will learn many things that will help our lives to be more godly. So stay tuned. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Hey, stop by and join us on Mondays at noon, America time, uh, America Detroit Eastern time. We do a little YouTube live and we'll go over the devotionals for the past week and any other videos or anything we've put out this past week. And uh, we'll talk together. May God bless you today.